Okay, we're going to look at example 12.10. Again, this is uh, chapter 12.5. And um, this is curvilinear motion. And remember, chapter 12, we're looking at curvilinear motion. Uh, but we are analyzing it using a rectangular components coordinate system rectangular coordinate system x y z cartesian vectors okay so how does how does what does the problem look like an airplane is flying this kind of trajectory given by this function y equals 0.001 x squared so an airplane is so there's my height there's my x there's the ground my x direction, my vertical direction, and an airplane is flying this kind of path. And it says the velocity in the y direction is a constant 10 meters per second. Okay? And so that's given, that's given. So again, guys, y is a function of x. Y is a function of x. <clears throat> the question is, here's the question. Determine the magnitude of velocity and acceleration at vertical position y equals 100 meters. So I've got my path, got the path, we know it's a function of x. We've got the vertical velocity at all times is 10 meters per second, which is constant. What do they want? Magnitude of velocity and acceleration at a certain height. Okay. So what do you notice now that's different to the previous problem? The previous problem, we ha also had x equal to something as a function of time. We, we had an explicit function where x was equal to something t. And so that simplified the whole problem. But now, we do not have x as a function of time. So if we write out our position vector, remember, I always this is how I always like to do it, so that I can see where everything fits in. I start, I start with my position vector, which is xi plus yj meters. Now, what are these two? Well, we don't have any information on x. We just know it's x. By the way, x is a function of time, right? But we don't, my point is we don't have x explicitly as a function, like x equals 3t. We don't, we don't have something like that. We just know that, that x is a function of time. And what is y? y is this, 0.001x squared j. Uh, meters. Again, so this is the, the general form. I have an x component, i. I have a y component, j. But when I substitute the information in, I have my x there, and then my y is given. This whole thing here is my y. All right? So now, remember before, if we did have x as a function of time, we just plug it in there. We plug it in there. Plug it in there into that x, then we've got something t here, we've got something t there, and then when we want to calculate our velocity, which is dr dt, then it's easy, it's straightforward. But the problem we have now is we do not have t, we don't have a t anywhere, so we need to make use of the chain rule. Okay, now what is the chain rule? If we want, um, let's use this as an example. If we want, so this is y, and v y, we want vy, for example, which is y dot, which is dy dt. Okay, I hope you're all happy with that, because v is dr dt, which means we want d dt of the x component, and we want ddt of the y component. So let's just have a look at the dy, the ddt of the y component. Okay? So using the chain rule, we know, well, let's, let's just say this. Y, 
we know that y is a function of x. It's given like this. 0, 0, 1, x squared. So y is a function of x. But x is a function of time. So y is a function of x. x is a function of time. So if we want dy dt, we need to do this. dy dt equals dy dx first, then dx dt. So dy dx dx dt. All right? So this is the chain rule. Make sure you know it. Go and look at Appendix C in the back of your textbook and do some, do some of those examples. Make sure you understand it. So now, using the chain rule, let's look at dy dt. dy dt. Right, there's our y. So dy dt is equal to dy dx, which is what? 0.002x. But then, we still need dx dt, which is just dx dt. So this equals 0.002x, and we know that dx dt, that equals x dot, or it equals vx. So I'll just put in vx there. So y dot, my dy dt, is equal to, dy dt is y dot, which is equal to this over there. So if we go back, what is our velocity? It's equal to, what is the d dt of x? It's just simply x dot in the i plus this, 0.002x vx, j, meters per second. Okay? So, I mean, I've written x dot here and I've written vx, but they are, they're the same thing. x dot is vx. Okay, so there we go. Um, because we don't have anything, we don't have x as a, an explicit function of time, we need to make use of the chain rule. So there is our velocity vector. Okay, that's what we're after. But now the question is, where is the question? Aha, determine the magnitude of velocity. So there we go. We've got our velocity. What is the magnitude? V is going to be Vx squared plus this whole thing, 2x times Vx, that whole thing squared, square root. So that is what our velocity will be. But we don't know what is Vx and we don't know what is x. Okay, how are we going to find these two things? Well, the way that we can find it is we know that y equals... 0.001x squared. And the, the problem is at y, we're looking at the problem at y equals 100. So if we plug that in there, y equals 100, we can solve for x, which is 316.2 meters. Okay? So that means we can plug that into there. Now what about vx? So the other unknown here is vx. Vx, vx. Well, what we know is that our Vy is a constant, 10 meters per second. And remember, this whole thing here, guys, is our Vy. The whole thing in front of the J is Vy. The whole thing in front of the I is our Vx. So Vy equals this. Vy equals that. So Vy equals 0.002x vx. And we know that this is a constant 10 meters per second. And we know that x equals 316. So the only unknown we have is vx. vx is calculated as 15.81 meters per second. Then if you go and calculate the magnitude of v using this, V is that, right? Then you should get 
0.7 meters per second. Again, that is the magnitude, that's the speed. And if we consider this here, right, we know that, so the speed would be that 18.7 meters per second at that height of 100. And we know that it must be tangent to the curve. Okay, they don't ask for the direction, but we know it must be tangent. Okay, so we've done the velocity. Let's look at the acceleration, the magnitude of the acceleration, also at y equals 100. So what do we need to do now? Well, we know that our acceleration vector is dv dt, right? But v is given by vx in the i plus 0.002x vx j meters per second. So I need to take the derivative of this with respect to time. I need to use the chain rule, but what you notice <clears throat> is that I also need to make use of the product rule, the product rule, because I've got two terms here. I've got a term there and a term there, which are functions of x, okay? So what is the product rule? D of uv is equal to the derivative of the first one, times the second one, plus the first one, times the derivative of the second one. Okay? So, please also read up on the product rule. So, let's go and do that. Okay, so A is equal to dv dt. Now, what is the, what is the first term here? d dt of vx is just ax, or vx dot i. Okay, so I'm just going to jump down here. Plus, now this is where it gets slightly tricky, but you just need to practice. It's not so difficult. I've got two terms, so I'm, I need to make use of both the chain rule and the product rule. Both the chain rule and the product rule, because I've got, I've got two terms here. So, so we need to take the derivative of the first term times the second, plus the first term times the derivative of the second. Okay, derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second. So if we just take a look at that first term, we, we want to do ddt of that first term. Can you see that it needs to, we also need to use the chain rule. Let's just rewrite the chain rule. So ddt, using the chain rule, say uh, dy dt was dy dx times dx dt. So what is dy dx of this? What is dy dx? It's 0 0.002. But then I still need to put that in, dx dt, which is x dot or vx. So that is vx. So that's the derivative of the first term. That's the derivative of the first term. Then I still need to multiply the second term. Okay? So that now I've taken care of the first term of the pro in the product rule. And I need to do this, this here, u times dv. So the first, 002x times the second, dv, so ddx, which is just ax. Okay, sorry that I had to write it out in this kind of form. But this whole thing there is the J component, meters per second squared. Okay? So, I mean, you can go and have a look at it in the textbook. So, so there it is. Sorry that I had to write it down like that. But just take, take that. There's my, a, my X component. And that whole thing there is my Y component. So let's just rewrite it. AXI plus 0 0.002 VX squared plus 0 0.002 X AX. That whole thing in front of the J meters per second squared. Now this whole thing here 
is a y, that whole thing. And we know, what are we looking for? Looking for the magnitude of the acceleration. Okay, so do we know what is ax? Uh, what is vx? I'm not sure if we know what is ax. No, we, we're trying to calculate that. We know what is vx. We know what is x. And we know what is, we don't know what is ax. So, so let's try to solve this. How do we, we can do exactly what we did in the first one, where we saw that vy is constant, 10 meters per second, which means that ay is zero. So ay is zero, and this whole thing equals ay. So ay equals 0 0.002 vx squared plus 0 0.002 x a x equals zero okay so there's our equation there do we have vx yes it was 15.81 do we have x yes it was 316.2 and so we just solve for the unknown ax and we get minus 0.791 meters per second squared okay So our acceleration vector is then um, minus 0.791 i plus 0 j. And we can see it's only got one component, and it's in the negative horizontal direction. And its magnitude, because it's only got one component, its magnitude will just be... Um, minus 0.791 squared square root, which is 0 0.791. So that's the magnitude. Okay, that's the speed. The direction is, it's just going in the horizontal, negative direction of the horizontal direction. So there's the, um, there's the path that the airplane was traveling. At that point of 100 meters in the vertical direction, we have velocity, which must be um, tangent to the curve. But then what is the, the acceleration vector, the direction? Okay, again, let's, let's draw the, the, the acceleration vectors. There's my ax, there's my ay. I don't have anything in, in the y direction, zero. But I've got minus, minus 0.791 there. So that is my only component. So that means that if it's my only component, then it is the resultant. It is the magnitude, right? So there is, the, there is my acceleration vector, minus 0.791 meters per second squared. Okay? So does it make sense? Yes, it makes sense because our acceleration vector is on the inside of the curve. There is no, ver there is no vertical acceleration component because our vy was a constant. Okay, so what do we need to take away from this? Um, uh, if we've only got y as a function of x, we need to make use of the chain rule and possibly the product rule if we're going to calculate acceleration as well because it gets more complicated. Okay, I hope that helps. Cheers.